Hello everyone, myself Dr. Aditya Gupta. Uh, in this video, I would like to discuss two, three topics that are, in my opinion, sort of intermingled, uh, sort of interrelated in some way. Discussing one common aspect to all of them, something known as uh, the effort principle, uh, which Divya talked about in this video. You can go and watch this video, and uh, it's something which has been talked by other uh, people as well. Uh, you can, you, you should in fact watch one of the following videos by Veritasium. Uh, is this video? I'll give the link of, uh, of the video in the description. Now, uh, the topic of the video is simple. Why are standard textbooks so tough? We all understand that uh, when we come into the first year or be, uh, our second year, uh, every topper or anyone will recommend that you should uh, read a standard textbook, be it Ganong or Guyton or uh, in uh, biochemistry, Harper or in pathology, you should try to read uh, Robbins in uh, pharmacology, Katzing in uh, microbiology and Anthana Ryan. Uh, these are what are known as a standard textbooks. And everyone says that you should try to read them. But whenever you end up opening these books, Almost everyone does open these books, does have these books in their uh, cupboard, but you find them to be too tough. And when you find them to be tough, too tough, you obviously will gravitate towards other textbooks and uh, which are Indian authors, which are easier, which help you pass your exams. But later when you are in your third year or fourth year, we would be like that people who have read those standard textbooks, they have slightly better conceptual understanding and uh, they remember the topics more or uh, you would feel that maybe you're lacking something. While, while you were reading the standard textbook, there was a paradox because you were not able to understand those standard textbooks and that was a, probably the reason you actually did not do those standard textbooks. So why are standard textbooks so tough? And I'll be very frank, they are tough. Beat Genong. Genong is one of the, I think one of the toughest textbooks that's actually ever written. And for a first year to understand Genong, it's, it's a task. Very frankly, it's a task. Same with Harper. And uh, same with uh, in uh, second year, if I'll say that Robbins is actually written uh, nicely. Robbins is easily understandable, but uh, at, there are portions where even Robbins gets tough to understand. Now, the answer to the simple question, I would, for my hypothesis is, but I think it is the uh, uh, it is true, is something known as the effort principle. Until unless you actually put effort into something, right? You won't A, remember it, or your B, your conceptual understanding of that particular topic will stay weak irrespective of the other resources that you have used. Uh, in such a scenario, for example, I, I'll give you the best possible example. Uh, this actually has been studies, uh, has been studied and has, is, is in what has been talked in the Veritasium video, uh, which I would recommend everyone to watch. Let's assume you're given an animation of an heart where the heart is pumping and you understand the cardiac cycle versus you're given just a picture with markings of how the cardiac cycle, let's say, works. What do you think would be uh, better for your understanding and what will you remember more? Most people will think that probably the animation will help us understand better, will help us remember more and stuff like that. Well, the answer is not true. That actually what people found, that people who use these animation performed poorly as compared to who stuck to the standard method of just, you know, diagrams and, uh, uh, you know, uh, lines and all given there. Now, this seems like a paradox while this thing is supposedly easier and obviously makes you understand much better. Then why do these students pretend to perform poorer who learned using these methods versus someone who stuck to the traditional style of, you know, book, uh, read, uh, seeing the image and, uh, you know, trying to imagine. But here is the answer, the last line that I said, trying to imagine. When you see that image and you try to imagine, you put in your own efforts and because of this efforts, that thing becomes memorable. Because of this efforts, that conceptual clarity that you're getting actually is much, much more as compared to someone who's trying to make you understand through those animations. And this is the reason why I even I keep on emphasizing that your own self-made notes are better than pre-made notes. We are under, we are under an impression that by using, by, by using pre-made notes, we are saving time and we can maybe revise them twice or thrice, right? Well, the fact remains that when you write them down yourself, the effort that you're putting in writing them down yourself makes you remember them more. While the initial effort that you have put in might be twice as compared to reading them for the first time. Let's say, while pre-made notes are there for any hour for that matter, of it takes you 10 days to do X, Y, Z subjects. And while if you write those notes down, it takes you 25 days. But that 2.5x extra effort that you have put in will be compounded. And next time, while the revision for them again will probably take 10 days only, in your scenario, in this scenario, it will take only two days or maybe in four days or maximum five days. The initial effort that is put in in B, 
understanding the things from the slightly tougher written standard textbook or making your own handwritten notes and uh, this effort actually gets later compensated by better understanding and a better memory this is especially valid for anyone who has purchased my first aid notes a lot of you asked for my first aid notes and i was like all right since a lot of people are asking let me give it to you but you have to understand if you just do my first aid or uh, just do first aid and my notes you really won't get anywhere the importance and the reason you will be able to get maximum out of first aid is if you actually read it and put the effort into that into annotating it then it will be yours then it will be your effort and that effort will take you forward a lot of people i am someone who always promotes smart work over hard work but people tend to forget that during the smart work i am working hard i am doing my hard work in a smart way but i am putting the amount of effort that is required i do study 10 to 12 hours a day when it is required beat my under graduation or beat my post graduation or during preparing for my dm entrances you cannot not work hard and get a better rank simply because the resources available to meet you are easier some things do require effort people tend to ask me what is the simple ingredient that you did and the simple ingredient is just two things i am always consistent whenever i am preparing for an exam and b i am i am someone who's hard working but when i actually get down to work and very few people have actually seen me working hard they will tell you when i'm working hard that's the only thing that i'm doing during that hard work i'm working smart i'm making sure that i'm revising things again and again annotating my first read instead of running after vast resources or doing my ncrt and stuff like that but i'm putting the required amount of efforts efforts if you think you can get away with those efforts and still get a similar rank or similar marks or similar knowledge you are wrong you're simply wrong the amount of effort a basic minimum amount of effort is required irrespective of the amount of intelligence you have i do agree that i am blessed with an above average intelligence but i still put in the required amount of efforts right so this is the reason why self made notes are better than pre made notes they they force you to take the effort this is the reason why a sim- standard textbooks do tough people who do read standard textbook tend to perform better than people who do indian textbooks or non standard textbooks and this is the reason the last thing the most important thing why sometimes offline coaching will beat online coaching because offline forces you to take the effort so whenever you're going to an offline class be it undergraduate and postgraduate when you're sitting there and they're making you write notes that effort that you're putting in making the notes itself makes it easier for you to revise those notes later as compared to an offline one as, as compared to let's say on an online one because an online one will always ensure that you are in a relaxed back state and that relaxed state is not somehow conducive to learning learning always has to be an active process it cannot be a passive process and this active process this active effort taking is what will get you through i hope i was able to convey my point about the effort principle you can actually watch a video of divya where she tools that it was actually done in 2014 a study done in stanford where they found that a set of students set a or students took handwritten notes of the lectures and said b use laptop or ipad to take those notes now the people who did took handwritten notes performed significantly better again simply because they put in the efforts that are required this effort putting is a simple ingredient that you need to do if you want to crack your exam get a good good marks in prof or do anything uh, well as far as academics are concerned so this is my video for today thank you and have a nice day